Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson number 135, we're going to take another look at scalability. Now, you could find all of my lessons, a complete catalog of them, on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. As a matter of fact, most of the material in my lessons come from my two books, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and Software Architecture, The Hard Parts, that I wrote with my friend Neil Ford. When we talk about scalability, uh, we've already visited this during Software Architecture Monday. As a matter of fact, in Lesson 71, I talked about how to measure scalability. And then, in Lesson 85, I talked about defining scalability and elasticity and took a look at the differences between those. But here, I'm going to address another angle of scalability that came up in a recent training class that I was uh, teaching. So I want to come back to uh, some worksheets that I did. As a matter of fact, a particular lesson, I can't remember the number right now. <laughs> uh, I introduced uh, some of these worksheets. And as a matter of fact, um, in this worksheet, uh, I included kind of the star ratings of various aspects of different architectures, various characteristics, five stars being really good and one star not so good in terms of supporting that particular characteristic. Now, in a particular recent training class, I had a student observe that, wait a minute, you're saying performance here is two stars, which I did address in a prior lesson, and that has to do with the latency involved with inner service communication. And they accepted that answer, but said, but scalability is five stars, exactly. And that's because of the fine grain nature of a service and microservice. We can scale at almost a function level. But the question came up, but wait a minute, how could you say microservices scale so well with such low performance? And I provided an answer, but several other people had the same question. Shouldn't these both be high or low? And it made me think, I should do a lesson about this. And I want to explain uh, the relationship between scalability and responsiveness and performance. And then answer that question about two stars and five stars. You see, if we look at scalability, um, some of the ways we can define scalability is a consistent response time as load increases. Um, but also another factor of scalability is to ensure capacity in our virtual machines, our database, our connection pools, all that stuff as load increases. But we do see a link, don't we, between scalability and responsiveness and performance. As a matter of fact, if we go to define performance and responsiveness, we could say the amount of time it takes to complete a single transaction, or in terms of responsiveness, maybe it's just simply the amount of time it takes to return some sort of information to the user. So then, what is the link then between scalability and performance? And the magic word, everybody, is right up here. Consistency. That's what defines a scalable system. Regardless of that response time. And let me show you what I mean. Let's take a look at a couple of use cases here. Now, this is some analysis of a system. Uh, notice on the bottom is our overall duration, and that's the response times, and the number of users. Uh, do you notice here that we've got some uh, user load increasing here? As a matter of fact, at one point it did go up to around 500 users, uh, down from around 100. And so we did have an increase in load. But look what happened to our duration. It stated about 600 milliseconds on average for this particular request. That demonstrates a scalable system. And specifically, it's right here. Notice as load increases, our response time remains fairly consistent. But what about those two stars in microservices? Well, let's do another example where, in fact, because maybe of some uh, inter-service communication and latency involved with network security and data latency from multiple retrievals of data, this is what our graph looks like. 
Notice here we've got a different profile, um, but our duration here is at two, two, around 2,000 milliseconds. That's almost two seconds response time. However, notice the same trend. As our load starts increasing, and notice we had kind of two spikes where it went up pretty fast over to around 500 users, our response time remained consistent. And that's what I mean about that relationship uh, between uh, that, that scalability and responsiveness. The responsiveness can be slow. For example, right here, uh, 2,000 milliseconds. But we can still have a highly scalable system. So the next follow-up question, of course, is, OK, I, 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 I get that. Now, scalability really is a function of response time, but consistent response time. But how do I make it faster? There's another factor I want to show you in this lesson regarding scalability. In other words, what are some of the ways of creating a scalable system? And if we take a look at the Architecture Styles worksheet, <clears throat> we look at scalability here. And we try to look for those number of stars in the four to five star range. And as a matter of fact, we see three of them. Microservices, event-driven, and space-based. And not surprisingly, all distributed architectures. And as a matter of fact, distributed architectures is where we achieve that level of scalability. Because we have separately deployed units of software and hopefully single purpose, what that means is we can start to increase load by creating multiple instances of those services. Well, this looks like an obvious answer, so there must be a trick to this. And in fact, there is. This is a very traditional way of creating scalable systems, but we have a problem. And that is, as we start to scale the number of instances, we have now formed a scalability bottleneck with the data. And that is in the form of those connections to the database as well as the amount of work that database is doing. So let's draw this differently here. So these are still the three instances, but not back to back, but they're all three running. Uh, what are the other ways of actually, interestingly enough, creating a scalable system is actually through caching. Most of the time we think of caching, for example, an in-memory cache, as increasing performance. And in fact, it does. But one of the secrets of caching is that it also significantly increases scalability. It's one way to drive that performance number uh, better, I won't say down or up, <laughs> make performance or responsiveness better, but also better scalability. You see, because I'm leveraging an in-memory cache, I have fewer database calls. And consequently, there's fewer connections needed. I can handle more load. And as a matter of fact, there's less load on the database. So for those particular requests that aren't in the cache, that I have to go out to the data for, that database is now not fully loaded. In other words, it's not stressed with all this high load. As a matter of fact, I've got plenty of connections as well. And so these combinations of thinking about scalability in terms of responsiveness also look for those particular limiting concerns or limiting factors, constraints. A lot of times oh, we're going to a third party service, for example. Uh, are we limited in the number of connections that we may have to that database or third party? Um, the horsepower, basically, of and throughput of the database or whatever may be a broker we happen to be using. These are all the constraints to look for uh, when we're talking about creating highly scalable systems. So this has been lesson number 135, Scalability Revisited. Um, this is our third lesson in Software Architecture Monday about scalability. It, it comes up quite a bit <laughs> because scalability is one of those seemingly important architecture characteristics in most systems. And so uh, thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.